So in this video, I wish to show you just how powerful the 3D cursor can be, as well as a few tips and tricks on its uses to help navigate some of the headaches that occur when using the 3D cursor. I think that the 3D cursor is oftentimes seen as annoying and in the way. And I might have agreed with these statements when I first started out in Blender. Back in the good old days, my 3D cursor button was assigned to the same click as my selector. So I was always one misclick away from changing the location of my 3D cursor. And you can probably imagine it was pretty annoying. So to new people entering Blender for the first time, the 3D cursor is oftentimes seen as the spawn location of most objects. So for example, if I have the 3D cursor over here, shift A, mesh, cube, and it's going to appear at that 3D cursor. See how that origin point, that orange little dot is appearing at the 3D cursor? So essentially a lot of beginners kind of work out very quickly that the 3D cursor is where everything's spawning. Now this is probably the least useful function of the 3D cursor in my opinion. Most notably because we can actually assign the location of the object via the little option menu here that comes with uh, the function of creating an object. So if I just open up that little pane here, I get the location of the object and I can actually just set that to zero. Not as fluid as just dropping it down on the 3D cursor, but still a very nice way to go about things. We can align it via world, view, as well as 3D cursor. But because of this idea that the 3D cursor is where everything spawns to, and then people like to move the 3D cursor nowadays via this cursor tool in the, our toolbar, sometimes people just learn very instinctively how we can snap it back to the world origin. So to snap any object back that has been accidentally placed on the 3D cursor where you want it in the world origin, as you've just seen, we can set it here. Alternatively, we can reset the 3D cursor. So shift S to snap, cursor to world origin. See how the cursor is now snapped to the world origin. And then I can snap this back to the world origin or I could delete it and remake it, but we'll snap it. So shift S again, making sure that it's selected, the object cube, and then selection to cursor because we're trying to get the selection to the cursor and voila. Snap is a really useful shortcut, but it can also be found under object and snap. And then we have all these tools here. Same ones as our little pie menu here. This sort of methodology and use for the 3D cursor kind of flows into what I feel to be a more appropriate use for the 3D cursor, that being using it to snap other objects or part of other objects to a certain location. So for example, let's say I have, uh, well, I'm making this model and I want to then snap this, like parts of this cube to a part of this model. Maybe I wanna merge the vertices together or whatnot, and I just need them to be really, really close. So what I would do is, let me just jump into this model and I'm gonna to go to vertex select and I'm gonna select this vertice. Now what I can do is I can press shift S, cursor to selection or cursor to selected. And as you can see, that cursor is now on that vertex. Now I'm just gonna grab this object, grab this vertice, shift S, and then selection to cursor. And now that vertice has been snapped to the location of the 3D cursor. Now, of course, this is a rather simplistic example of this in use, but it highlights what I feel to be a much more feature rich use for the 3D cursor. So again, let's do it one more time. So let's go cursor to select it, making sure that I have that vertex selected. 
And this time I'm going to jump out of edit mode and jump back into edit mode of this object, grab that vertex, shift S and curse, uh, not cursor, selection to cursor, excuse me. And now if we jump into edit mode, we see that those two vertices are going to be exactly on point of the vertices that we had selected before. So of course this isn't looking very good, uh, but that is definitely a more useful way of using the 3D cursor. And then the final and second, and in my opinion, the most useful feature of the 3D cursor is to use it as a pivot point. So what do I mean by pivot point? Well, every single object technically has a pivot point out of the box. So cube, and if I go to rotate, our pivot point is our origin of this cube. And if I had just a little bit of it selected, let's say that face and then go back to rotate, the pivot point is going to be around the median or the average of all the locations of the current selected points. So then what do I have to do to change the pivot point? Well, there's a little icon up here called transform pivot point. And if we hover over it, we're going to see that blue word that says median point. Median point is telling us that it's going to collect the average location of all the points currently because we're in edit mode. And then that is going to be the area that we're going to pivot around. If I'm not in edit mode, it's the same thing. Median point. Now, in this case, it's going to be the actual origin. So. Uh, but if we have multiple selected, of course, it's going to be the median point between those two objects, just to keep that in mind. Uh, it's, it sort of works on a object level because we're in object mode now. But let's just now highlight this and switch this transform pivot point to 3D cursor. And as you can see, our transform widget has is now on the 3D cursor. So I can rotate around that point. So you can definitely see some use cases for this. For example, if you have a tie or some sort of cylindrical object and you're trying to position another object around it, we can use the 3D cursor by just setting up the 3D cursor to be in the center of the object and then use it as our pivot point to rotate that object around this cylindrical uh, alternative object. So as you can see, if I set this 3D cursor to the barrel. So let's go to the center of the barrel. To, so to select the center of the barrel, I'm just going to select this loop here by holding Alt and clicking in the middle of the vertices. Then I'm doing Shift S, alternatively going up here to, uh, excuse me, Mesh and then Snap. So, whoops, Shift S and cursor to select it. That's going to go directly into the center of all those points, which is going to be the center of the barrel. And now if I rotate, Let's just position this a bit more on the barrel. So something like that. Now I can rotate it, if I may, along the barrel like this. So this is really, really, really powerful in my opinion and is my personal favorite use case of the 3D cursor. So I hope that I've been able to convince you that the 3D cursor while annoying sometimes, is a very useful and feature-rich tool. So I hope that this little short tutorial has been of use to people. If it has, smash that like button. If you've disliked it, give it a dislike. Also let me know what I, where I went wrong. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please hit that subscribe and bell button to be notified on a new tutorial's release. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Hayden Fowles. Fowls on fantasy.com signing.